Okay, let's go. Good morning, everyone. Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, first of all, Madam Clerk, we want to call the roll. James Schlender. I'm here. Tom Duffy. Here. Jesse Betcher. Here. Brian Bissonette. Brian. I see him online. Okay. Stacy Hessel. Here. You have a four. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, certification of compliance. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by Section 19.84 of Wisconsin statutes. Okay, thank you. And the media agenda has been set. Does anybody have any additions or corrections to the agenda? Hearing none, let's move on to public comments. Um, Linda, I see you've had written reports. You're on. Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill Lane, an Edgewater property owner. Um, three items. One is related to uh, comprehensive planning and I we might ask to be recognized later after Sheldon Johnson's report. Um, some matters came up at last month's um, committee meeting where I thought there might be some solutions. One would be that when county board members are representatives on outside organizations, that they report to their committee of jurisdiction on a regular basis so that uh, the committee and then ultimately the county board can stay informed on what's happening. So whether it's the Northwest Regional Planning Group or libraries, whatever, that constant feedback during the year would be helpful. Uh, second, along those lines, uh, the, the um, potential for the county to do strategic planning has been brought forward for the last three county board chairs. And there are models out there and other counties have done that. Again, uh, the strategic planning might help with this issue about community or committees of jurisdiction and uh, possibly some efficiencies. And lastly, um, with regard to the comprehensive planning process the county has been going through, uh, the committee met uh, after having a public open house in this room and uh, acted to move the county, uh, the, the plan forward uh, to the county board to set a public hearing date. My concern has always been with the process and I've expressed some of that concern to uh, Mr. Johnson. I understand COVID has had a big impact in the public process, but I think more could be done within departments and committees before the comprehensive plan moves forward. One example has been the recent action of uh, the committee and the board to uh, provide a letter of support for a broadband um, fiber optic expansion, which is a duplication of CenturyLink services and in an area where there's no cell phone coverage. So in this last comprehensive plan meeting, one of the com committee members identified in her area three, three new cell towers that weren't part of the mapping that's part of that comprehensive plan. Cell communication and broadband connection is very important for many aspects in the county. And I would think that in this planning process, the county would be, want to be very thorough in identifying where there are cell phone towers and where there is fiber optic versus maybe the copper lines to make better informed decisions in the future. Thank you. Can you be that line, Mike? Oh, okay. Okay, let's go on to the minutes. Uh, anyone, uh, you all had copies of the minutes? Can someone move to approve the minutes? Mr. Leonard? I'll move to uh, approve the minutes as presented. Moved by Jesse. I'll second that. Second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Very well. They're approved. Okay, let's move on to the, uh, the agenda then. Surrey County Fair. Anybody here on the fair? No. Um, Just this weekend, though. Just to make note, it's this weekend starts the fair, and Friday night, Chris Cruzy will be playing. So they're, they're planning on a huge fair this year. How about the weather? Looks good. They're planning that the weather will be great. I'm assuming. You encourage it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, okay. The extension. Uh, the yeah. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm so sorry I missed last month, um, but I did. Uh, thankfully, Lynn uh, did go ahead and send out our quarterly report to you afterwards. I think so. Thank you very much, Lynn, for our misstep with all of that. So. Um, if you did take a peek at that report, you may have noticed in the uh, under my part, uh, letting you know that Sky Holt uh, has moved to a different position in Pierce County. And so that leaves um, 4-H and new development in Sawyer County, an empty spot right now. So I just wanted to update you on um, what we're hoping for that position. Um, I have talked to Tom and Mike about it for the 
budget because I know going into budget season with an empty position isn't always the best um, spot. So uh, we are looking at refilling that at 100%. Sometimes extension doesn't do that. Um, we just kind of assess needs in communities and, and um, change our allocations uh, to best serve the community. But from the institute director's pers perspective, we really do want to invest in a full-time person um, here in Sawyer County, especially um, hoping to connect better with the tribe as well. Um, so we are planning some visioning sessions and kind of community assessments in the next month, probably, um, to uh, try and get the word out that we would love to have community feedback about what they would like to see for youth development in Sawyer County. And so that also includes all of you, especially on this committee, if you um, have some ideas and concerns and want to see some other things developed. So, um, for instance, in community youth development, there's um, a few different areas like community health, um, pathways to college and employment, uh, restorative justice, and youth and governance are kind of the four big chunks of community development when it comes to youth in counties, as well as 4-H. Um, so that's where we are, is really just trying to um, get some community input about uh, what the job description would look like um, so that we can get the best person hired for the position. So um, that's the biggest update, I guess, maybe, uh, with extension this time around. And I'm certainly willing to answer questions or comments, and we know we will want your input into hiring the next person. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Oh, okay, let's move on then to Amy Lakes. Carrie, you're on. Okay, good morning. Um, so I just did this little report. This is what I had sent to Mike and Tom, um, kind of showing how we, we're, we're doing a good job or not. So I don't know if you want me to kind of go through some of this stuff. The only thing that I wanted to say that was interesting um, is that, you know, we printed 70,000 guides this year because we weren't going to any sports shows. I'm almost out. I am down like 1,500. It's worth doing like 300 months that are just getting mailed out that people are calling and asking for. And we didn't go to any shows. So we're upping our guides to 80,000 next year because we're going to be going back. We're going back to sports shows. So it's crazy to me how much print is still going out the door. Um, and we're at this, we were at the state fair and they did have to take a thousand so that. That took a big chunk of ours. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is the um, since the bid put up the uh, that really awesome. Did you guys see that really cool kiosk map? So anyway, we asked to be on there as a public restaurant. <laughs> so we're seeing about 100 people now are, are coming to the information center a day. So we know that they definitely needed to know where the public bathrooms were. <laughs> so. Um, and, and we're very happy to accommodate that and make the tourists happy when they get into town that they you know, can get that off their mind and get on the shopping. So um, the other thing is room tax. So it did get passed in the town of Brown Lake, um, but they did reach out to me and they aren't sure how they want to distribute it. So um, the meeting will be this Thursday. So I will be there hopefully. Um, they said we'll get a portion of it, but they may spread the wealth a little bit with other organizations. So we'll kind of see how that plays out, and that will be this Thursday at 6.30. And then the funnest thing we've been doing all summer is um, we hired a firm that's called Sherpa. And um, I don't know when you guys go on vacation, if you ever go online or you go on Pinterest and you Google, hey, I'm going to go to Boston. What are the fun things to do in Boston? And then we'll say the top five things to do if you have kids under five, or the top three things if you're bringing your elderly parents. So those are, we're putting together those adventures. We're doing 32 of them. And um, it'll be out there. And we'll, we'll, um, we're hiring, hiring, they're called influencers. So they come with their families and they experience it. And then people can read firsthand. Okay, I have a parent who's in a wheelchair and these are the things I can do. So we're really excited. And it's been really fun um, doing those. We've got three that are done. And we've got two that are on tap for this month. So. Um, and I've got those listed there. So that's really fun. And then with all of that, we, get, we can use their blog. We can use the pictures they take for anything in our 
vacation guide, in our website, whatever we want to do. So that's kind of what we've been up to. Summer looks good. Summer's been really great. Yeah. For lodging and yeah. Okay, anyone have any questions? Fall is filling in really well as as I've been told. Good. Thanks, Sherry. Yep. Okay, then let's move on to Northwest Regional. Chill. All right, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good to be here. All right, uh, as Sherry said as well, she submitted a report, as did I, and I do not plan to go through it because hopefully you've already read it. Uh, but I'll just give you some highlights from uh, that I think are important for the, for the group. So uh, most importantly, uh, the Planning Commission had our annual meeting last uh, month in June, actually uh, a month and a half ago in June, and at that annual meeting, they recommended the levy amounts for our county members. Uh, and that was included in your packets. You'll have that. So that would be uh, uh, a measure for you to consider as uh, your budgetary process moves forward. Uh, there's lots of planning information, housing, and economic development within that context. But there's three things I really wanted to focus on uh, with you in person today. Uh, the first is, uh, most of you know that uh, Governor Evers allocated $130 million of ARPA funds to look at work for, uh, workforce development. Um, as part of that, $100 million is set aside for innovative grant, an innovative workforce grant program to encourage regions and communities to develop leading edge long-term solutions to the workforce challenges the state faces in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, I know Mike uh, and the other economic partners that we have across the region have been having discussions about how we might be able to look at that $100 million as an effort or a project or projects here in Northwest Wisconsin. So last week we had a, a partner call uh, across the region uh, with individuals. We had uh, Uni Uni University of Wisconsin uh, Superior uh, on the call as well with our economic development folks, looking at uh, some opportunities perhaps so we can partner with WIB or UW Superior or some other uh, projects that we can look at to sustain future workforce uh, initiatives. So it's really just started. Um, WEDC will be administering the $100 million, $130 million program. Uh, in this case, the $100 million specifically that we're looking at taking into. Applications are not yet developed. The WEDC or Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation is still currently uh, formatting and formulating the application for eligibility. We do know that 10 million is the maximum you can apply for. So what we're anticipating is that once we flush out potential projects and partners with this process, either Northwest Regional Planning Commission or more likely Visions Northwest uh, or the WIB, Wisconsin Workforce Investment Board, will be a lead applicant for that project. So it's really in its really uh, infancy, if you will, as it relates to application development and pro project development. So if you've got any, any input into that process, uh, certainly would uh, entertain that conversation. So that's the 130 million, uh, along with all the other millions that are out there for everybody. Um, wanted to talk about a, uh, a new grant program that just came up that I noticed on Friday. I emailed Mike and maybe Mike will talk a little bit about it later. Uh, and also council member Jim Miller uh, for the city of Hayward. There is a uh, hometown grant program that's available to communities of 50,000 or less throughout uh, the country. Uh, T-Mobile is making this grant available. It's $25 million spread out over five years. And the pro program will focus on revitalizing community spaces in towns of 50,000 or less. Um, as soon as I saw that, it was like uh, two years ago, Hayward did a placemaking process here in the community. It'd be a really great opportunity to use that project and that, that placemaking effort to then now implement projects within the context of that placemaking pro program. So we've, you've already, City of Hayward and the community has already gone out and identified some really great things in that project. These are dollars that can actually help implement that. So really, really great thing. And I think that uh, the community might take a look at. And then lastly, I wanna talk about a another million dollar project that we've got going on internally to the organization. Uh, WEDC and the governor announced recently that they have $50 million that's available for uh, businesses who are filling vacant commercial spaces. 
So Northwest Regional Planning Commission, uh, in partnership with WEDC, will be administering a grant program. And I don't have this information in my packet for you because it just came out here more recently. But this, we're receiving $1 million to provide businesses a $10,000 grant if they purchased a building as of January 1st of 2021, if they purchased a bit building and they moved a business to that, they themselves moved their business in there into a commercial vacant building. Or if, uh, for example, Sherry had a, a vacant building downtown and I wanted to lease that facility from her for a commercial activity, I would be as the, the leaseholder uh, eligible for $10,000, $10,000 grant. So basically it's a fill the vacant downtown community storefronts with a business. It's really straightforward and simple. Applications are online today at our, on our website. So the planning commission, you can go to our COVID-19 our COVID uh, web link on our website or just click on the, uh, the news information that we have out there for that. So again, the program, you have to be a business that enters into a vacant commercial building as of January 1st of 2021. The program extends all the way out to June of 2022. And as long as there's money available, you have to, uh, you cannot have left another business location to go to a business location to access the $10,000. Uh, you just have to fill a vacant commercial space. There's, it sounds really simple, but once you start to drill down into who's eligible, there is, there is no definition of who's eligible or who's not eligible, I should say. Landlords are not eligible. Like, correct. Yeah. There are some things that are not eligible. Landlords are not eligible. You can't acquire a uh, dead storage building. So there's, there are some, some, some requirements as it relates to it, but from the context of uh, $10,000 for businesses to use at their discretion, they can use it for improvements. They could use it for capital, uh, capital purchases for equipment and, and, and the like. So I've got a whole fact sheet on it that I can, I can leave if you all want, but uh, applications are available online. There's three pages. You have to have a local economic development uh, organization or chamber write a letter of commitment that yes, company ABC is in fact a, a business in this community and they are in fact located inside that um, storefront, if you will. So that that's on there. I know we've had conversations with Mike. Um, I'm not sure that your organization can do it, but uh, the chamber certainly can do it. Uh, so there's some opportunities there. So if you know of any business who has moved into a vacant storefront as of January 1st of 2021 or moving forward to June of 2022, I'll let them know of this grant program. We, uh, we're having a conference call tomorrow with WEDC and some other folks to determine what is the definition of vacant. Is vacant one day, two hours, three weeks? Uh, we don't have that definition yet. Uh, they're trying to make the program very flexible um, as it relates to eligibility in order to get this money out. So WEDC has $50 million total. They've allocated out 25 million of that 50. Uh, we're a recipient of, recipient of a million dollars. So we're hoping to push out as many $10,000 uh, grant program uh, to businesses here in the region. So that is my uh, short report, along with my more extensive long report that I submitted to you. So do you cover this in the press? How does the average Joe know about this? Yeah. Um, Mike? <laughs> so yeah, Mike, Mike, for sure. I mean, he's our local partner, you know? So <laughs> as it relates to the planning commission, WEDC did a big push last week, Thursday. So that it went out there and, and we, did we, we, we did receive responses from folks across the region already okay. that had sought on WEDC. Uh, it's on our website. Presumably, the, our economic development partners will be splashing it out there as well. We're doing a press release to the media, to the yeah. newspaper print media this week as well uh, on the program. So we're hopeful that, you know, through our partners at the economic development level, chamber level, uh, that information will get out there. The chamber oh. sent out an email to everybody a few days ago. And... Good. Yeah, uh, yeah Mike. Um, yeah, um, Krista Rohde's done a really nice job of getting the word out. and. Uh, a very user-friendly approach. The application just went live eight o'clock um, last week, uh, to, and today I'll be meeting. 
probably the business you're familiar with that our potential candidates are uh, Amundsen's Appliance, Wisconsin Surf, Hole in the Wall Books, Northwoods Burger. Those are the ones I've communicated with and be meeting today and working through the details. So we're aggressive in trying to bring as much of that to eligible businesses here as possible. Yeah, well, it'd be a shame if the public doesn't know about it for a lot of money. Yeah, and it's not only uh, commercial activities uh, as, a, as a relative business, but nonprofits are also eligible. So if there's a nonprofit that's moving into a vacant building, they're also eligible for the $10,000 grant uh, program as well. So it's a, it's certainly, we know there's businesses out there that uh, qualify and we've identified them and they've been calling us and people have been sharing the word. So uh, we should do, should do really well. And we'll keep you updated. I as it relates to Surrey County and uh, Hayward specifically as it relates to that. And I'm sure Michael as well. And then just lastly, I just want to mention, uh, we, we have been having some conversations with uh, the new LCO grant writer, Orion Bakken, I believe her last name is. So we're having some conversations with them as it relates to some opportunities that we can either partner on or provide them more information on. Good, good. Thanks, Sean. Okay, anybody have any questions? Jesse? No? Okay, thank you much. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. Okay. Let's move on then to uh, Mike. Here. Well, thank you. Um, well, as Sheldon has alluded, there's been a myriad of uh, rollout in the last three weeks and funding opportunities, both at the state and federal level. Um, that the Federal Economic Development Administration announced uh, late in July six categories uh, uh, under the American Rescue. Uh, plan programs. Uh, of those, three of them are the most applicable to Sawyer County. That cat, one at category, economic adjustments assistance, 500 million. Um, later today, they'll have the first webinar on that. Another category is indigenous communities. That's 100 million. That um, tomorrow they will have the webinar on that. And I do have a meeting set up with the LCO planning grant department uh, for tomorrow. And then um, the, they have a, the third category relevant to us is travel tourism and outdoor recreation, 750 million. They had the webinar last week on that. And uh, I've had some conversations with Chris. I hope to work with Sherry and any trails groups. Um, just for example, you know, the, the details always roll out. So, as Sherry mentioned, they have increased uh, marketing needs. Well, at the federal level, you can't get marketing funds. That comes from the state's rollout, which uh, the governor announced $10 million just recently. So it's sort of, you know, to work, you know, within our community to broker our needs and our organizations so we can plug and play in the right direction is a big part of the early stages of this. Um, Sheldon mentioned the, the bounce back program. Um, hopefully we're gonna be able to take advantage of that. And, and uh, the, the eligibility that rolls out, not just into June of next year, I believe. So it's something that we have to keep on our radar screen for activities that are, that are about or are going to happen and it will be eligible. Um, you mentioned the hometown grant. Uh, Eats forward that to Jim Miller in a bit. We'll be talking more about prospects on that. I did attend last week the winter community meeting to hear some of their needs, and I had forward that opportunity on to the organizers down there. So we'll be following up on all of these uh, things to, and you know, writing those support uh, documentations that any organization needs, helping to write grants as uh, things get more formalized. But um, it's a very active time. And I, I think that the role the Economic Development Corporation can play as any business goes through this is sort of help manage all those technical details. Because you know we have well-defined, well-documented, data-driven needs, but uh, you, if you don't put it in the right place, document it the right way, it can certainly affect your uh, results. So if you hear of eligible businesses that, that Maybe I, I or you know, the people I'm hearing from are, are, are uh, uh, aware of, just please reach out and let me know. And I, I would look forward to having a conversation with you, Sherry, on some of the tourism related stuff and, and on the trails people. There is infrastructure opportunities in that, docks, trails, those sorts of things. So 
let's do, let's all work together to do what we can to maximize these opportunities. Good, thanks, Mike. Any questions? Thank you. I just want to take on this, uh, Mike's comment on the EDA or the Economic Development Administrative Funds. So as part of the $3 billion EDA program, there's six buckets of funds that were identified. Uh, if you recall back eight months ago, when Congress approved the $3 billion EDA award, it took them a long time to go through the, the process. It took them a long time to go through the process of doing the NOFO and all of the legal stuff that they have to do. In the legislation, about a third of that $3 billion was allocated towards tourism. EDA, at the, at the national level, has set aside a, a part of that tourism dollars to go specifically to the states. So it's our understanding that uh, Governor Walker, or Governor Evers, uh, has uh, just recently received a letter from EDA stating that they're eligible for some amount of money that we're not sure yet uh, for tourism. So we would already know there's lots of tourism money out there, but this is another bucket that's gonna come out there, uh, presumably if the state of Wisconsin applies for these EDA tourism funds, that they'll have sole discretion on uh, putting them out there uh, for for more for more tourism activity. So, stay tuned. Uh, as I know more information, I'll let you all know too as well. I might share. Yeah, good. Thanks, Sean. Yep. Anybody have any questions now? Either one of these guys. Well, if I could make one more comment. Um, in all of the webinars they've had, they really encourage you to not only work with the EDA Wisconsin representative, but also the regional planning align with your community economic development, regional plans and stuff. But uh, we do have trying to set the date to actually bring the economic development administrator represent, representative right here to Sawyer County. So both uh, our communities and the tribe can have direct conversations and uh, form those relationships. Okay, thanks. Thanks guys. Okay, let's move on then to motorized trail. Mr. Rotek. Good morning. Um, in regards to motorized trails, it's been very busy out there, uh, as I reported in the past. Um, last year, I would say that our trails traffic has doubled, if not tripled. It's continuing to grow this year again, uh, a lot of ATVs out there. Um, also, I wanted to touch on Nortec just a little bit. On that, two weeks ago, we attended the Nortec meeting, and some of the new board members probably know what Nortec is. It's Northern Regional Trail Advisory Committee. It's a 10 county. Uh, organization uh, set up by Northwest Regional Planning. Uh, it's been a little bit lack in the last couple of years here, year and a half because of uh, the COVID epidemic. We haven't been meeting at all. Otherwise, they generally meet four times a year. And with the 10 counties, they work together on connecting our trail systems, motorized trails. There was a lack of it before, you know, that each county was doing their own thing, but we weren't connecting. Well, with the growth of the machines and everything, we need connections with the, with the counties. Um, so one of the reasons I'm discussing this is because budget time is coming up. They're going to be asking for some money for the budget. It's going to be also on the forestry committee's uh, agenda to talk about it. But it's also along with the partner organization, IDPIC. Uh, that's the regional planning for the tours up here. And where these come into play is the Nortec developed uh, the map for most snowmobiles and ATVs, a 10 county regional map. IPEC is producing the map and distributing the map now. And that's, uh, sure you're well aware of that. And that's gone over real big. Um, people want to expand out. They're not just looking at in your county, but they want to travel a little farther out. And so that's where it's important to uh, the connections there. <coughs> So, other than that, everything's been real good. It's been very busy. Are you eligible for any of these funds that the children's been talking about, or Mike? I've got to talk more to Mike to see what where we're at. I know, and and this is the, the council. I'm on the Governor Snowmobile Council, and both the Snowmobile Council and the ATV Council met here a couple weeks ago about funding for maintenance on our trail programs. And we Sawyer County does have some grants in for both. For both of them, but I don't know what's it all going to be entailed on these other grants here. But the tourism funds that the governor has approved, do you think you'd be eligible for some of those? That is to work with Sherry, Sherry on the tourism and that, yeah. 
some some grant opportunities will cover construction or maintenance type things, others won't. That's, that's a matter of identifying the specifics and putting it in the right state or federal opportunity and then not duplicating other grants that are already they're eligible for. So it really will be a collaboration that will be the key on this. So who's, who's writing grants for things like that for you? For you? Anybody? Yeah, well, our, our grants right now that we apply for are through the county, through the forestry office. Okay. For the snowmobile and ATV grants have to come through that office to the DNR and such. Um, so who writes them though? Do you write them or does the no. forestry? Uh, Greg or Kyle write them for forestry. Yeah, we represent him what we figure we should be applying for for grants. Uh, trails that need more maintenance than what's available. <clears throat> our trails, we actually get a lot of money just for maintaining our regular trails. You know, we're getting like $900 a mile for ATV trails for summer winter ATV trails and $300 a mile for winter ATV trails. Those are funded trails. So that being said, we've got 150 miles of ATV trails funded and 384 miles of snowmobile trails. So if you times those dollar amounts, that's what we're, we get for regular maintenance funding, which we use every year. So are those funds are adequate to, to, to maintain the trails? Now with the traffic we've had the last few years, no. Yep. And a lot of it, a lot of the work is done by volunteers out there, but we don't have the equipment anymore. I mean, with such heavy traffic, we've got to, we've got to actually hire out bulldozers. We've got to get more gravel on our trails. Our, our trails have been pounded the last two years. I mean, the, the gravel's gone off, but we've got to haul that in. So we've got to hire more work out. And of course, right now, this year, all your contractors are extremely busy. So it's difficult. Greg's put out for some bids on this with forestry. Um, he's got some, some going on, but we just need to work together better on how we're going to get to work done on the trails. Okay. Good. Any questions, anybody? Who's promoting the trails? Is it solely Sherry's office promoting the trails? Mainly through her. We also have a Facebook. The Sawyer County Snowmobile ATV Alliance has a Facebook page. A lot of questions come there, but the Alliance works with with VCB. They got it right now. There's a real good partnership. There. And I, I I wrote a grant last year, a winter grant that we had, and I submitted the second year. Okay. So yeah, we've been promoting. Well, certainly okay. it's paying off if they have to pay more to maintain them. So that's good. Yeah. And I would say Sawyer County is the top five counties for both snowmobile and ATV traffic destinations. A lot of people that are, are coming up here. So Wisconsin. We're, and last year we were one of the few counties that had snow. Yes. At one time there was only seven counties that were open. So in the beginning of the season. So that helped. Or snowmobiling, we're dependent on Mother Nature. Yeah, we had good snow in the northern part of the county. The southern wasn't quite so lucky. On the winter area and Tuscobia, they were lacking mm -hmm. snow. Yeah, uh, those trail needs were uh, mentioned considerably at the winter community meeting. Mm -hmm. Maintenance needs and just the uh, ATV and snowmobile trail type thing. So it is a, a countywide issue for sure. A big item for uh, tourism for sure. Thank you much. John, you said we were one of the top destinations. Do you have a rank order or you mentioned like what number of we? No, the there, there's not an official ranking of who's the best. So we can say we're the top ten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean if there's we not an official ranking. Yeah. Yeah, I can even trademark. Yeah. <laughs> top destination. <laughs> in America. Not in just America. <laughs> North America. Yeah. But we have world class events. We have world class trails. We do. <laughs> I like that idea. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you much. Thank you. I passed you out now a letter from Ben Pop uh, summarizing what the Brookies done. Basically, they last week they had the Lumberjacks, a huge success. Um, they had a sellout for Saturday, um, sold out. And they're now talking about replacing all the bleachers for next year. Has some estimates of about seven hundred thousand dollars. You can buy a section for twenty five thousand. So, 
stand in line and <laughs> well, you can buy a whole section of bleachers. I yeah. saw that. <laughs> well, Your logo goes if on. anybody can raise the money, then you can do it. Okay, so let's look for future agenda items. Anybody have anything you want to throw on the agenda? Yes, anything new with the with the humane or the historical society? Uh, not that I'm aware well, of. Yeah, I still, I mean, can't get in there. Yeah. I know their hours are still pretty. Uh, They're very aggressive. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, eight to two. It says right here. So. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any correspondence reports they want to talk about? If not, we can be adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, Dave Wurzbo with WEDC. I don't know if anybody's still out there. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself. I was planning to be at your meeting, but uh, I came down with COVID. So I'm recuperating from that. So I've been just sitting in, listening in. So I met with Mike a number of times, and Sheldon kind of hit all the high points of all the funding out there. So just wanted to introduce myself. And thank you. Anybody else online? We should come about Mike. Um, Mr. Bissonnet, Mr. Schlender, Mr. Hoff. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you, everyone. See you next month. When, when, is, the, when is the paint pickup? Is that hazardous waste?